Hi, my name is David, and I try to play guitar. I'm not very good, as you can tell. One day, I saw a video of blues great Joe Bonamassa getting very technical about his guitar amplifiers. For guitar player, that guy really knows his stuff about amps. He inspired me to learn more. But to really understand guitar amps, you need to take them apart and put them back together. I watched hundreds of videos. I read all kinds of books. From Craigslist and eBay, I bought a used soldering iron, some old voltmeters, an ancient oscilloscope, and other test gear. Eventually, I built an entire electronics lab. Now, I guess I'm sort of an amp mechanic. I fix other electronics too, and this, well, this is my journey. I figured I'd share so others can learn too. I hope you like it, and just as a disclaimer, be sure to consult an expert before working with electricity. That's right, all of you guys out there in YouTube land, safety, the number one concern. Make sure you consult an expert before sticking your hands in a high voltage guitar amplifier or messing around with electricity in general, which is what we're gonna talk about today. Hi, I'm Dave the Amp Mechanic, and this is the first episode of my video series. I'm down here in my basement lab. It's a little chilly down here, which is why I'm bundled up, because we just had that bomb cyclone of 2018 hit us in the northeast of the United States. So it's a little chilly down here, but it's okay, I can get this video done. I wanna to talk to you about how it is I power up the, my amplifier lab. And I have designed a power center that is built not only to protect me from getting hurt, but also to give me the ultimate in flexibility for testing gear when I'm testing devices like guitar amplifiers and other electronics. So let me tell you what's going on here. Number one, I have built these components so they're all color coded. This is my isolation transformer. This is a Variac. And as you can see, this is red, this is black. This receptacle here corresponds to the isolation transformer. It's red. This receptacle here is black, corresponds to the black Variac. This wire here, red wire, corresponds to the isolation transformer. And that's the input to the isolation transformer. This is coming out of it. This black wire down here is the input to the Variac, right? That's the output of the Variac, all black. And finally, you see this yellow wire here, right, because it corresponds to this yellow. This is the input to a current limiter. We'll talk about that. Sometimes called current sharing, and this is the output for the current limiter. So now, what is all this gear for? Well, first of all, let's point out that I have a four socket GFI outlet over here. Okay, you might not be able to see it as clearly because my body's in front of it, I'm crouching down low to get into the camera and be able to talk about all this gear. Uh, but there's four sockets here. This has got a GFI socket over here protecting all four sockets. So these two guys here are connected to the GFI, which is probably hidden from view. And all of this is wired back to a 20 amp breaker at my fuse box. Then, okay, this is the source of power for anything that's on this board. And then this board is the source of power for anything that's over here on my uh, test bench. So the way this works is, number one, isolation transformer. The whole idea behind this is that uh, it separates, it isolates the device under test from being physically connected to the power that's coming from the fuse box back behind me here in my basement. Basically in a power panel back there, right? Why do we want to be physically disconnected from that? That way we don't create a physical circuit between the device under test and the power panel in such a way that if I somehow complete a circuit between the source of power and ground, I end up electrocuting myself. Isolation transformer means there's isolation between the two circuits. The power is basically two windings in this transformer, power coming into it will be in one winding, power coming out, going out through the other winding. The two are not connected to one another. So that was a very important safety feature for my lab and uh, I'm, I use this pretty much every time I'm plugging anything in for test. Anytime I'm gonna stick my hands in something, right? All right, so if I want to put a device under test, a DUT on the isolation transformer, I plug it into the red socket and then I take the red wire and I plug it into a power source. That power source could be directly coming from the fuse box in the wall back behind me, or I could plug it into the Variac and I can adjust the voltage. This particular isolation transformer is rated for 120 volts. 
This isolation transformer is rated for about 130. I don't think I'll ever have to push it that hard, but even if I get up to 130, I think this isolation transformer would take it. I've tested it, it seems to work pretty well. The point being that um, I can uh, adjust this, let's say to 40 like that, and that's, will be, that will give me 40 in and 40 out of this if I have the isolation transformer plugged into the Variac. So that's how this guy works. Basically, it's a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio on the winding, rated for 120 volts. Now the Variac is also uh, connected to this door, this white door that I have here, and I'll talk a little, about, a little bit about that in a minute. But the Variac itself um, has, is, is the black wire, and typically I would plug this black wire into uh, the, the circuit coming from my power box back behind me. And then I might plug the isolation transformer into that. So that's usually the way I configure this. And then finally, this yellow wire, which corresponds to this yellow outlet, this yellow wire is energizing the current limiter, which is uh, four light bulbs that are wired in parallel, but the whole apparatus is basically wired in series in the circuit so that I can plug the current limiter into anything here. So let's talk about a typical configuration. How, my, how, might, I, how might I do this? I'll take my Variac and I'll plug it into my 120 volt power source coming from the fuse box, right? I want some safety here. I want to be able to adjust my voltage when I'm working with amplifiers. I want some safety here. I want some isolation. So I take the isolation transformer and I plug it into the Variac, okay? Now, whatever voltage I, uh, I adjust here, let's say I go up to 70 volts, it'll be 70 volts going um, out this socket through this wire into this transformer and then out into this outlet. Now I take my uh, current limiter and I plug that into this, right? So now the circuit is going from the wall to the Variac, then out through this red wire to the isolation transformer, then to this socket right here, out through the yellow wire to my current limiter, and then I take my device under test and I plug it into here. Now what is the current limiter for? I said that there's uh, four light bulbs, they're 60 watts each, wired in series to give me a 240 watt current limiter. And the point of that guy is that also, if for some reason I put myself uh, between uh, the device under, te uh, between the source of power and uh, ground, and somehow I end up completing the circuit, uh, the amperage that's going through that circuit will uh, end up getting shared across the device under test, let's say the amplifier, me and what we call the current limiter. It's limiting the amount of current that I have to absorb, right? Because it's taking up some of that. And so again, that's another safety feature that uh, you'll see a lot of other guys using when they're posting their videos about testing amps. Um, I got some inspiration on that, not only from Mr. Carlson of Mr. Carlson's lab, but also from Uncle Doug. Um, Uncle Doug has a, bunch, has a video up there on YouTube which shows you how he's got his current limiter set up. It's more of a light bulb that he moves around. One single, very uh, high wattage light bulb. So that's how all of this is set up. It gives me the most flexibility. For example, if I just wanna plug my, uh, my isolation transformer directly into the circuit and energize it that way, I can. Um, if I want to plug it into the Variac, I can. If I just want to use the current limiter and plug that into the source of power coming from the wall, I can do that. There's all sorts of different ways I can combine these different devices to form the circuit before I power up and energize my device under test. Now, I mentioned that this is a door. I basically built a frame and mounted the door to the frame. Here are the hinges right here. And the door opens up this way. Why did I do that? Well, I don't want any of the wiring to be exposed that connects all of these things to each other and to these sockets. I want it tucked away where there's no mistake. You can't like touch them by accident, maybe get hurt. So the way this works is I have these hand knobs and the reason I have them is because the transformers are so heavy, this being the isolation transformer, the Variac being an auto transformer, very heavy devices, I was worried that they might just rip the door right off the hinges. So I wanted another way of securing the door to the frame that's behind it without uh, running the risk of the whole thing coming off the wall.
So behind the frame, on the back side of the frame, are some T-nuts. I'll unscrew one of these right now. And as you can see, we've got this hand knob with the threaded stud, and there's three of those. And by, by screwing these in here like that, and having these three, there's no way this door is coming off the frame that's behind it. Now what's going on behind the door? Well, all the wiring that I just described to you that kind of connects these receptacles to these devices and to the current limiter, the wire for that's going up and out the top and towards my uh, four bulb current limiter. One thing that's really important about that wiring, I have a 10 amp fuse that's going on the hot lead from this black wire here to the Variac. Then I have a 10 amp fuse on the wiper. That's the hot lead coming out of the Variac. So if 10 amps going in, 10 amps going out. If for some reason this Variac overloads anything when I just turn it on and crank it up, that 10 amp fuse between the Variac and, and, and the source of power will blow. If something I put on the Variac directly, let's say a device under test, let's say I decide not to use any of these other things, if that puts too much load on the Variac, more than 10 amps, that'll blow that fuse, right? And then finally, I also have a 5 amp fuse that's on the input side, so it's on this red wire going into the isolation transformer. Should I put something on the isolation transformer that overloads or, or exceeds 5 amps, that fuse will blow and power will not flow to anything else that the isolation transformer is plugged into. So that's how I've got this set up very much with safety in mind. The idea is we want the circuits all nicely protected with fuses. We want our bodies protected and isolated so that we don't end up completing a complete circuit from uh, the, wall, the power source coming out of the power panel here in the basement to ground, right? We don't want to have a physical circuit there. Uh, and the ultimate in flexibility. I, can, uh, I have a Variac here. I can adjust the voltage going to my amps and I can configure this any way I want. So there you have it, that's my design. Again, you're welcome to replicate that design. I take no responsibility. If you do, if you have questions, I will try to answer them. Just post them as comments below. Um, again, this was inspired very much by uh, not only Uncle Doug's work, but also by uh, the power center that Mr. Carlson has for his lab. And if you look at the video for that, I'll put a link to it below. Um, you'll see that he his transformer, he pulled it out of a CNC machine. It has the capability between all of its windings to do both 110 or 120 volts and 240 volts. And he elected to take advantage of that flexibility. I don't think I really needed that myself. I'm just going with the 120 capability right now. So that's my power center. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. Again, if you have questions, post them below. I'll try to answer them as best I can. And of course, stay tuned for the next segment of my long running series. I'm Dave the Amp Mechanic. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.